Louise von Richthofen, was born November 3, 1983. She was the daughter of German engineer Manfred Albert von Richthofen and psychiatrist Marissa von Richthofen, and also had a younger brother named Andreas. She was raised in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and lived a very privileged life, having very successful parents, with a net worth of $5.5 million. They lived in a beautiful house in a gated community, and both Susan and her brother received the best of everything, including education, and were supplied pretty much anything they wanted in life. There were also trusts for both Susan and her brother that they would obtain when they turned 18. Susan was known for being a sweet and very popular girl. Susan was also very beautiful, so people were always drawn to her. She was also very close to her parents and her little brother. So to the outside world, this family appeared to have it all. When Susan graduated from high school, she began studying law at the Catholic University of Sao Paulo. It would be the summer of 1999 that Susan would start taking jujitsu classes and this is where she met a man named Daniel. It was not long after meeting that the two started dating. They were crazy about one another and were very joined at the hip, both spending time at either Susan's house or Daniel's. Susan's parents allowed the relationship in the beginning due to them seeing how happy he made their daughter and the fact that they didn't get any immediate red flags when it came to him at first. So for the most part, they seemed to like him pretty well. But this changed over time when they started to see bad habits in Daniel that they were concerned would affect Susan. Daniel never really seemed to be motivated to be much of anything in life. And they started to notice that the two were spending a little too much time together. And that brought them concern for Susan's future. Finally, Susan's parents told her that she needed to end the relationship with Daniel and that he was no longer a good influence on her. In a normal teenage fashion, Susan refused, which caused tension between the once strong and loving relationship between Susan and her parents. When turning 18, things didn't get any better, and the relationship between Susan and her parents got worse. And as she was growing away from her parents, she was growing closer to Daniel. At one point, Manfred and Marcia decided to go on a month-long vacation and left Susan home with her little brother. Susan was thrilled, and after her parents left, she moved Daniel into the house with her and her brother, giving them the house to themselves for the first time. The two didn't do much of anything productive during that time, and pretty much lounged around the house the entire time Susan's parents were gone. But after returning home, Susan finally asked her parents, could they get her an apartment for her and Daniel to live in, since there was tension with them in the home. But Manfred immediately said no, but suggested that she get a job so that she could afford her own place. But this was not something that Susan wanted to do. So time went on and Susan became more defiant towards her parents, especially when it came to Daniel. And finally, they'd had enough. They threatened that if she didn't end the relationship with Daniel, that they would no longer give her money. This was devastating to Susan, now that her choices were limited. She loved Daniel and refused to break up with him, but she also didn't want to have to support herself and wanted to continue receiving her allowance. So she decided to make a plan that would change all of their lives forever. When informing Daniel of everything that was going on with her and her parents and what they were planning to do if she didn't leave him, the two came up with a plan to murder her parents. They knew if they followed through with this, that they would finally be able to be together without any hassle. And also, Susan would inherit half of her parents' fortune. So for the next couple of months, the couple, along with Daniel's older brother, Christian, put together a plan. On October 31st, 2002, Susan deactivated her home security system and security cameras. Then Susan dropped off her brother at a place called Cyber Cafe, which was a place where you could play video games and other activities. Afterwards, she met up with Daniel and Christian and the three headed to her house. It was around evening time when they reached the house. Susan entered the home first and went upstairs to make sure that her parents were upstairs sleeping as she assumed they would be, and they were. 
Afterwards, she went back downstairs and signaled for Daniel and Christian to come in. Next, she sat down on the couch in the living room and gave the okay for the boys to proceed upstairs. When reaching the parents, the two brothers began beating them with iron bars. Due to the loud screaming, Daniel became concerned that someone would hear. So he went and retrieved a wet towel and put it over their mouths. And it was also said that they used these wet towels to try to strangle the parents as well. But even with these efforts, the parents were still fighting for their lives. So Daniel went to the kitchen and got a jug of water and proceeded to pour this down their throats, attempting to drown them. This did end up killing Suzanne's father, but not her mother. So the boys decided to put a plastic bag over her head and suffocate her. And this time, it worked. Susan's mother passed away as well. While all this was going on, Susan was still downstairs on the couch in the living room. The boys came back downstairs to let her know that the murder had been carried out. Susan went back upstairs afterwards to make sure that her parents were gone. Susan was satisfied, and then all three proceeded to stage the killings as a break-in. They took money from the parents' room and scattered important documents all over the place. But the three individuals were not the brightest when it came down to staging a crime. They tried to mess a few things up and then leave the home to check into a motel so that they could have an alibi. But after leaving the house, they never realized that they had accidentally left a cell phone behind, along with a few other items. The three went to a hotel to wait things out for the moment before Susan went to pick up her brother and go home. Christian decided to go get something to eat and use that as another alibi. Finally, the three checked out of the hotel and parted ways for the evening. Susan went back and picked up her brother and they went back to the house. When entering the house, that's when Susan and Andreas found their parents. They called the police soon afterwards and when arriving, Susan and Andreas were hysterical over what had happened to their parents. But the only difference between Andreas and Susan was that she was acting. They tried to express to the police that they believed that it was a break and gone wrong. But the police, when investigating the crime scene, soon realized that something wasn't quite right about the scene. The house was not trashed as one would imagine it would be. And they also noticed that the alarm system was turned off. They realized that the only way to disable the alarm system was from the inside of the house. So the police immediately knew the person who committed the horrific act had to be close to the family. Now it's normal in an investigation like this for the police to look towards the people that are the closest to the victim, which was Susan and Andreas. But it's what happened the day after the murders that would make the police narrow in on Susan. The next day was Susan's birthday and not even a full 24 hours after her parents' murder, she had a small pool gathering with her friends and Daniel. This alarmed investigators and their attention went from both of the kids to Susan. There were two major things that investigators found out over the next few days. One was that when talking to the 911 dispatch and reporting what had happened, Susan didn't sound like one would imagine she would sound after finding their parents had been killed. And two, the investigators learned from an interview with Andreas that Susan was having problems with her parents pertaining to her boyfriend, Daniel. So not only did they watch Susan's actions, but they also watched the actions of Daniel as well. A few days later, Christian was arrested in possible connection with the crimes when he started spending money and specifically bought a motorcycle with cash. Investigators found this suspicious due to him having the ability to buy such an expensive item and being unemployed at the time. They questioned Susan again, asking her about the information that they obtained, but Susan continued with her story. But this didn't last for much longer. Eventually, it became too much for Susan, and she finally broke down and admitted to having her parents murdered. When learning this, the public was shocked, and the media attention in Brazil exploded. The public was very divided when it came to who committed the murders. The public had a hard time believing that Susan had anything to do with the murders, being that she was a very beautiful and very well-off teenager that didn't have a trouble history before meeting Daniel. Daniel and his brother were completely different. The brothers came from a lower-income lifestyle, and to the public, 
They fit what they considered a criminal profile. People felt sorry for Susan, that she was caught up in all of this. But all of that would change when Susan did a television interview talking about her parents. Her attorney was with her, and during a break in the interview, Susan's attorney pulled her to the side, encouraging her to be more emotional when speaking about her parents. He advised her to cry hard and loud so that she could gain sympathy from the public. But during this coaching, the cameras were still rolling and Susan was still mic'd. Everything the attorney said to Susan was captured on live television for all to see. People were shocked and disgusted when seeing this, and her support from the public quickly changed. Four years later, Susan, Daniel, and Christian were put on trial for the murder of her parents. During the trial, Susan chose to play the victim and blamed everything on Daniel and Christian, making it seem as if everything was done by the brothers and the only reason she went along with it was because of how much she adored Daniel, giving the impression that she had been brainwashed. But even with this, Susan showed no emotion. After putting the blame on the brothers, they turned around and placed the blame right back on Susan, stating that the whole thing was planned by Susan and that they participated because money was involved. And unlike Susan, they expressed regret and emotion during the trial. Even though it was becoming very clear that Susan orchestrated the whole thing, Susan still continued to try to lie her way out of it, stating that her parents were alcoholics and that her father sexually assaulted her. But her brother testified and debunked everything that she said. Susan, Daniel, and Christian were all found guilty. And on July 22, 2006, they were sentenced. Susan received 40 years in prison and both Daniel and Christian were sentenced to 38 years. During the time that Susan was serving her prison sentence, in 2011, Andreas sued Susan for a portion of her inheritance. You see, regardless of what Susan did, according to the laws in Brazil, she was still going to receive her inheritance when she got out. But Andreas won the case and was rewarded the entire inheritance. It's unclear of what happened to Andreas afterwards or where he is today. But it's known that he is not in contact with his sister, and it's believed that he changed his last name. And to this day, Susan is still serving her 40-year prison sentence in a woman's correctional facility in Brazil. Music